Good morning, good morning, and welcome to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Gumbo Talk Thursday, and we're here to open your mind. Because today is the day I have been waiting for, for months, actually. But technically one month. Why, because why month? Why because month? I have been wanting to start a book club. <laughs> I have been wanting to start a book club. I talk about how I read all the time, but I'm always reading by myself. So I was like, I want people to read with. Oh, but this book, everybody's read it. Did you see I posted it? Everybody's like, oh, my God, I read this book. It's an amazing book. Well, you're going to have a bunch of comments today. Good. Everybody's read the book. Good. But that's the point. But you know what? You need to be re- reminded sometimes because I've read this book and I reread it. And it brought up an entire host of new emotions. And if you don't know what we're talking about, we are talking about this shack. It is where tragedy confronts eternity. It is by William Paul Young. And just to give you a little bit from the back, The Shack is one of the most absorbing works of fiction I've read in many years. My wife and I laughed, cried, and repented of our lack of faith along the way. The Shack will leave you craving for the presence of God. And that is by recording artist Michael W. Smith. This book brought up so many things for me. And honestly, everybody has a shack. You're right. It, 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 everybody has a shack. And I know you don't know exactly what I'm talking about right now, but by the end of this show, you will totally understand. So, uh, I'm trying to, uh, add us to Facebook right now, but the devil's trying to be, uh, <laughs> he doesn't want us to talk about this I'm book. Just, I'm not, he being does funny. not, the devil does not want us to talk about this book. You know, those days where you're about to do something and everything that can he try does to aggravate everything you, to distract you. He did not want me to talk about this book this morning, but guess what? We're talking about the book. We are absolutely talking about the book and I'm glad I actually put up a, a short summary of the book. And I think, and we have I, Ursula Roche on here from our Tuesday show. So we're doing a little re- mix and Terry Garen will be here in a second because we really wanted you know to talk about the book and to really get into it because it is so uh I don't want to say it's really complex because actually once you read it it's very simple and the problem that we have is that we as human beings make it complicated and difficult and that is actually part of what the book talks about uh look I'm going to I should have had this up sorry y'all love y'all but uh (laughs) <laughs> it's the devil. Can we blame it? Is. We should pray first. <laughs> Look, we're going to say one to ourselves right now. Because I wanted to give you the short, uh, the short summary before I go into full depth into the book. Okay, here we go. Here we go. See? He can't, he can't keep me down for long. He can't keep me down for long. So, The Shack. The Shack is a fictional story about a man, Mac, whose daughter is abducted and then presumably brutally murdered though her death isn't confirmed for years. But four years after Missy's abduction, that was his daughter, he received a note from Papa. Papa was his wife's name for God, asking Mac to meet him at the shack, where evidence of his daughter's murder was found. It is here where Mac has an encounter with the, with God and the... the um, all, with the the, the, the uh, holy the trinity, triad. yeah, the right. holy trinity. I couldn't even get it out. The holy trinity, and it's not what you think, <laughs> you know. Which is, and he's able to come to peace about some of the deeper questions that have plagued him in his life, Missy's death, and his own pa- painful childhood of abuse. So the book actually starts at in the forward. So if you do read this book, please don't skip the forward. Y'all know some of y'all like to skip the forward, but the forward is actually <laughs> very important. It's very very important, and so. So it starts out, it gives you a little back history on Mac and exactly who he is. So long story short, Mac came from a, a small town and his father was 
an alcohol was an alcoholic, and he used to beat um, his fa his mother and his family members. And, he, and at, th at the age of thirteen, he had just gotten so fed up with it, and he really wanted to save his family. So what he did at the age of thirteen was he decided to run away. But before he did. He put rat poison in all of the alcohol bottles that were all over the house. The beer bottles. The beer bottles. So yes. he knew what was going to happen oh, yeah. when he left. But he was like, <laughs> I'm saving them all from this. <laughs> and they're not going to be able to put it on them. And I'm already gone. So it is what it is. He wrote a letter to his mom, which explains yes. and apologized. Yes. For killing his dad. Yeah. You know. Wow. Amazing. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? But then he felt bad about leaving because he knew mm -hmm. he knew that he left his mom and, and siblings mom. behind mm -hmm. right. with the abuse. But then I guess he figured, you know, dad's going to die anyway, so he won't be abused too long. Right. I mean, right. Exactly. So I guess, you know, oh, she'll, find, what an she'll find a story. way or she'll have a better way after this. So, I mean, you know, like, so y'all don't skip the four because it's very important. <clears throat> it comes back to, it comes back in the end. So you really need to read the forward. Oh, yeah. So getting into the book, getting into the book. So it starts out, you know, there's there's a family. They have five children. Two are older, you know, way at college and kind of doing their thing. And they have three younger kids. School's about to start and it's about to open up. So the mother has to go get, you know, some extra credits for, you know, for work. And so how many of us are in that situation? You know, you got to go get your CLEs or whatever it may be. Right. So she goes to get extra credits. And the, and the dad's like, oh, well, I'm going to take them on a camping trip, you know, before school starts. You know, I can do it. I watch you, you know, take care of the kids. You know, I can do it this weekend. You don't worry about it. Right. We're all good. So they go away, um, and they have a wonderful, you know, couple days. It's almost a week at, at a, you know, a state and, park. Yeah. And they do their camping canoeing thing, and all canoeing, and they stuff. go to the, the, you know, top of mountains. They yeah. do hiking and all these things, and, you know, canoeing and fishing and, you know, all kind of stuff, you know, stories over the... the you know campfire right. and they actually meet other group of families and they all come in they all have kids different ages and you know kind of the ages some of the same and some of the same ages and so you know they end up being you know kind of like a community and a little family there themselves so towards the f the end of the the morning of the last day his two older kids they're like dad can we please go out for our last canoeing trip can we please go out for this last canoe and he's like nah I don't think it's a good idea you know we're trying to pack up I'm trying to watch the little sister we're trying to do all this you know I'm trying to do this no please how many of us always give in you know when they ask on the 21st time because they're like, persistent they don't give up like dad 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 dad, dad. You know? <laughs> please please you know, <laughs> let me do it let me do it I know I'm guilty right. of that you know right. let me raise my hand I think we all have been at some point in our lives but you know what everything happens for a reason there are no coincidences so long story Story short, the kids go canoeing. Well, while they're canoeing, you know, their dad is proud of, well, they're proud of themselves, a little girl, Kate. It, it's it's uh, Josh and Kate. Kate is proud of herself because, you know, they're canoeing, they're doing it by themselves. And she waves at her dad but and takes the oar and does it as well. But while she's doing this, she loses her balance and she capsizes the entire canoe. So, like, oh, my gosh, there's confusion, you know, there. Uh, and Kate pops up. But Josh doesn't pop back up. So he's like, oh, my goodness. He runs out there to try to get his son. And, you know, he dives underneath. He sees his son. He tries to pull him out, but he's attached. So he comes back up for air, and he's like, oh, my goodness. The only way is to try to push this over. So he, he tries. It doesn't go, and he tries again. And finally, he gets he gets the, the canoe to, you know, flip back over, and his son is saved. You know, they drag him to shore, literally. They're doing CPR on him, trying to resuscitate him. At this, all of the other families are around. It's this big deal. You know, he's coughing up blood and everything else. He said blood and breakfast is what he, you know, he, he caught up, he coughed up and, you know, everybody was just like thankful that he's alive. So they're like, okay, where's Missy? Right. Missy I guess I got these two children. He left Missy at the table he left, coloring. He left Missy coloring to go save mm -hmm. Josh, his son, Josh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's like, okay, where's Missy? So they're like, oh, okay, maybe she went to the bathroom, maybe this, that, and the other. So they're, the, And then they had a little girl about her age that, you know, they were kind of, you know, together all the time. So they were like, well, they couldn't find the other girl either. So they're like, oh, they're probably together somewhere. So they go to look all the bathrooms, all the showers. One family comes back saying they found their daughter. His daughter is still missing. Right. Can y'all imagine that? Oh, that's you would just have to lay me out and oh, I couldn't even imagine. Stretch me I out. literally couldn't imagine. Put me in an induced coma. Lay me out. Seriously, lay me yeah. out. So, goodness. Y'all, this is a book. So anyway, um, 
they can't find her so eventually you know they're like okay this is real we really can't find her so they get the police involved and they eventually find a color her coloring book with a ladybug with a ladybug pin in it like a like a right. push pin but it's mm-hmm. a ladybug and so long story short they they block off everything and they were like and one of these guys had been you know drinking too much and he's like oh you know what i saw this green jeep and you know what he had a little girl with him and it was like well was it a red dress and he was like yeah it was a red dress and they were like oh my gosh so then they really figured out that she was abducted right. so they shut down everything um Oh, gosh. It's hard to, like, talk about this part. So they, they shut down everything, and they go on this huge search for this little girl, but they come up with literally nothing. And then they get some information that they see them going down this highway, which is maybe maybe 10 or 12 miles away from where they are, something like that. So anyway, they go that way. They find, I'll make a long story short, they find this shack. In this shack, they find a blood stain in front of the fireplace and they find remnants of the bl- of the red dress right and blood and blood everywhere that's all they find they do not find her body so obviously mm-hmm. they look and they do whatever else but at some point the search had to come to an end and everyone did have to go home so the book picks up for well they kind of go back <clears throat> and forth but it picks up 4 years later where he is at home and he you know, what do you do when you're at home and, you know, it's time to go get the mail, right? So he goes to get the mail and there is a note. And it's a note that says, meet me at the shack. Papa. Instantly he knew what the shack was. And of course he knew what the shack yes. was. It was the, the, it is, my, it is a monumental, uh, it is the epitome of pain for him. I was going to say pain. Exactly. Yeah, it's the epitome of pain epitome. for him. That's the way he described it. And how many of us have a shot? For anyone. For anyone. Yeah. For anyone. anyone. It, it's it's where you keep the area of hurt that you don't want to discuss, that you don't want to talk right. about. We just keep it in this too one painful. little secure area, right, because it's too painful. It absolutely painful. is too painful. Mm-hmm. And when you talk about the loss of a child. Mm, even more painful. Right. And a brutal death. Right. And you don't know what her... You know, her, her, her death was like, uh, and she's never been found, and there's no closure, and it is the epitome of pain. You know, when you find a, when you find a body, at least there's some closure there. He never found that. So this place is the ultimate epitome of pain. And then for him, you know, obviously everyone else didn't know about his past, but he right. was thinking, God, is this my payback? Is this my right? Is this my for, karma? Right. Is this my for karma my father. for, my for father. what I did to my father? Yeah, punish me. And is yes. this my punishment oh, wow. for what I did for my father? And how many of us have that? Is this is something you're going through now your punishment for something you've done? You know, right. Early in your life, right. when you were maybe immature, just didn't know any better, right. you know, and you feel like, is this my karma? Right. You know, God, why are you doing this to me? So it's about, you know, opening your mind to living differently in the world, y'all. You know, The Shack really is one of those books that uh, it makes you think, it makes you, you know, tear off those wounds, but it brings you back to where you need to be. And that's exactly what we're going to do after the break. We're going to talk about, you know, what happened when he decided to actually get to that shack. We'll be right back. This is The Good Life. We are here on Gumbo Talk, and we are discussing The Shack. Are you satisfied with your current financial position? My name is Kenneth Barnes, President and CEO of KB Enterprises, where we specialize in putting together step-by-step financial action steps for your plan for today and for tomorrow. Whether you're 50 to 85 and need assistance with your final expenses, we have coverage options for every situation. Let us put life back into your finances. Call us today at 504-914-1202. That's 504-914-1202. Are you looking for a better way to get fit? Born with the same old routines? Looking for results or a way to instill discipline in the kids? Tiger Rock Martial Arts is the answer with Taekwondo, kickboxing, and self-defense classes. Tiger Rock diversifies your training in ways that allows individuals of all ages and fitness levels to feel like a champion. Join Tiger Rock today. TigerRockNola.com or 504-455-9694. That's 504-455-9694. 
store with a three-class starter pack starting for only $38, which includes your training uniform. Learn, grow, and succeed with Tiger Rock's three convenient locations, Old Metairie, West Bank, and Clearview. There's no better time to start gaining strength, skills, and protection for life than now. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. See you on the mat. Gentilly Italian Pies, home to the $5 Family Happy Hour. Specials on pizza, wings, and drinks, Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Gentilly Italian Pie does fresh for the entire family. Salads, pizza, pasta, wings, and oven-baked sandwiches. Gentilly Italian Pie offers lunch and dinner in a new, modern atmosphere surrounded by big screen TVs. Dine in or carry out by calling 504-826-9180. That's 504-826-9180. Relax, have a drink from the fully stocked bar or beer on tap while your order is made from the freshest ingredients. Gentilly Italian Pie, 4706 Paris Avenue is home where everybody knows your name. So bring the family to Paris and Marabou for the $5 Family Happy Hour Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's Gentilly Italian Pie. Dine in or carry out. 504-826-9180. That's 504-826-9180. You gotta try the pie. That's the original Italian pie located at Paris and Mirabu in Gentilly. Carter Business Development delivers. For businesses to compete, they must have access. Let CBD be your bridge for business development services, radio advertising, social media marketing, brand ambassador, outreach, and access. Contact Carter Business Development at 504-400-7127 or email Eileen at TGLRadioShow.com. Carter Business Development creates unfolding opportunities. CBD connects the dots from where you are to where you want to be. Join the good life now with Carter Business Development, 504-400-7127, 504-400-7127. As quoted, a man who stops advertising to save money is like a man who stops a clock to save time. Let CBD save you time and give you access. Call 504-400-7127, 504-400-7127. Take the steps required for access so you can live the good life too with Carter Business Development. That's 504-400. 7127. When I got hit in a car accident, the insurance company tried to give me less than I knew I deserved. I called Morris Reed Jr. He got me $150,000. I'm Morris Reed Jr. If you got hit in a car accident, call me. 488-HELP. You're listening to WBOK New Orleans. Good life with me, Eileen. We are here on Gumbo Talk Thursday, and we're here to open your mind. We are living the good life here on Gumbo Talk Thursday, and we're going to jump right back into this conversation because it really is so moving, and there's really so much that we we want to talk about. And the book is just so in depth. So I'm going to kind of uh, speed through the book and exactly, you know, the uh, the chain of events so that we can get to the meaning of the book. So Mac, the main character, after, you know, losing his child, has this thing called the great sadness that sits upon him. It's kind of like a depression. And how many of us can relate to, you know, something heavy just sitting on you? So with all that being said, he goes to meet uh, I.E. Papa, which is his, his wife's name for God. He goes to meet um, him, her, she, how, <laughs> at the shack, however you would like to, and you will figure, you will know exactly why we're laughing in a minute. Because when he gets there, you know, he breaks down. And he's like, God, why did you do this to me? You know, what is the deal? You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to be here. You know, he contemplates suicide, and he's just like, you know, I just can't take it anymore. And he's like, you know what, I'm leaving. So he... he 
he leaves he starts to leave the shack and as he starts to leave the shack you know it's 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 a it's a it's winter and it's heavy but everything starts to melt in in about seconds it turns from winter to spring and then he turns around slowly and he looks back at the shack and it looks like a totally you know majestic majestic place and he's like all right so he turns around he starts walking back into the shack you know he's smelling all of these wonderful you know aromas and everything else and so when oh, he goes yeah. back in he meets a large heavy set black woman <laughs> yes and that that floored me but then when you read on you realize why she presented herself as why god presented himself as a woman right and he's like you know you're a woman but i'm gonna call you papa and she's right. like yes you see the metaphor in that because i am not a he or I, a she i am a spirit and she knew that Mac would have, she didn't want Mac to, you know, sort of judge her in a way or, 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 you know, think back on his religious belief about, you know, God, man thing. She wanted to, and especially since Mac had murdered his father. Exactly. So she appeared as a woman, which gave Mac to me a more open mindset exactly. to accept the things that were going to happen. Exactly. She's actually said that. She's like, if I were appeared as an old, as an older white man, I would feed into your preconceived no, notion. Of what about. God is, exactly. and that's not who I am, and I don't want to fit that bill. Exactly. Nor would you be able to accept me as a father figure right now with the issues you have with your father. So I'm coming to you as you can accept me. So think right. about that. God comes to you and meets you where you are in a form that Ooh, you, in a form that, that you can you, use, that you can accept. Yes. Hello, based on what has gone on in your past, based on what is going on in your life. I'll imagine that. So then it gets even better because guess who comes in? I know. Jesus comes in, y'all. <laughs> comes into play. And he is, um, what does he say? An, an, uh, a Middle Eastern looking man. And, you know, uh, I'm going to kind of make it shorter, but, you know, uh, <laughs> Mac had his preconceived notions of him. He's like, I, I just thought you were going to be this handsome, rugged, whatever. And he's like, you're and nothing like not. what I, I thought. You're just kind of a right. normal, not too, you know, whatever. And he's like, you know, I am who I am. Exactly. And so that's who Jesus is. And then Sarayu, <laughs> which is i.e. the Holy Spirit. And she is a a light kind of being with of shimmering Asian, hair but of Asian glowing. descent I know of Asian descent so it's all the it, it breaks garden. down every preconceived notion that you could see yes right. and a gardener and a gardener go figure and Jesus out was a carpenter so yeah, he was, was right. <laughs> right so during the process while he's there you know his experiences with each one of them God Holy Spirit and Jesus and then they explain to him that they are actually one and actually through the process they're eating and they're having dinner and he's like wait do y'all really need to eat and they were like no we're just doing this for you because we right. love you right. and because we're meeting you where you are which you know it brings so many different emotions and I don't oh, want to give away word. each piece of the book because I want people to read the book but Absolutely. it really it really really ugh. so long story short then Sarayu, i.e. the Holy Spirit, takes him. It's like, come on, let's go garden. So he was like, this is a mess. And she was like, Well, some of it you. wasn't a mess, but there was a reason a for fractal. this. Yes. Right, right, right. So, you know, they had things here, there, and everywhere. She's like, you know, it's a beautiful, I eat mess. And, you know, he, she took that as a, a compliment. Go ahead. Right. But, you know, what? When later when you read in the book, you find out why the garden is a mess. Because it's actually, you know lives of people's planted you know those it's his soul right, his soul so and it's a mess so yes the a, garden that he was actually that. Uh, weeding wonderful. out the garden that he was actually oh. weeding out is his soul Man, it's amazing. Y'all need to read this book. <laughs> Y'all play around if you want to. Mm -hmm. So with all of that being said, he goes through all these, I don't say adventures, experiences with God and, you know, learning who God is and how to love God. And, you know, and really, you know, he goes through his experience of God. Why my daughter and and, you know, why choose her? And God explains that he did it because, you know, he, that he loves all of his children. Mm -hmm. And when he actually has a conversation. Oh, then then Jesus is like, well, the next day, Jesus says, you know, we're we're going to come take a walk with me to the cave, to, to the cave. cave. But yes. on the, but guess how they had to get to the cave? I know they walked on water. Jesus is like, trust me. And Mac was like, oh, I, he's I like, don't oh, know uh -uh. if I could, you know, no. And it's funny because when they tried to walk back, he tried to do it without Jesus. And he just started walking on the water as if he could do it. And Jesus is like, no, no. it works better when you do it with me. Right. 
You have to you have to walk with me. Everything works when you walk with me. So while they're at the cave, they meet Sophia, who is a beautiful Hispanic lady who happens to be the epitome of God's wisdom. And there he is, it is i.e. judgment. Mm-hmm. And so oh. she's like, oh, you can be the judge. What do you, and, and he's like, no, I don't want to be the judge. She's like, well, you judge, you judge every day in your life. You All judge this. You point fingers. You do this, that, and the other. You can judge. And, and he was like, oh, no, no, I don't want to judge. She's like, yes, you can. Now come sit in this chair and you're about to judge. And he was like, okay, well, who am I judging? And she said, God and humanity. He was like, oh, oh no, 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 no. I don't want to <laughs> judge doing that. God. I don't want to judge God. And, he, and she was like, well, what are you talking about? You've been doing it every day. Haven't you thought, haven't you been judging him for taking away your daughter? Haven't you been judging him every day for, you know, the, the, uh, the pains in your life? Haven't you judged him every day? So sit down in the chair. Let's judge God. So to bring it, you know, to shorten it out for you, you know, it comes to a point where Sophia, i.e. the wisdom of God, says, you have five children. You need to choose two who are going to live eternally in heaven. Oof, that was deep. And you need to choose three who are going to live eternally in hell. I need you to choose. Right. Right now. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I can't choose. She's like, what are you talking about? These are your children. Choose which ones are going to live in heaven. <laughs> Right. And choose which ones are going to hell. We don't have an option right now. Ooh, choose. Yeah, and he said, you know, your children or, you know, oh, my right. word. And then, and then she's like, well, Kate, she's the one you're having trouble with right, right. now. You know, why, why can't you just choose her? Yeah, let Kate go to hell. But I love Kate. You know, she's my child. But didn't you just say she didn't do this? Or you? I know that's your thoughts because, y'all, every time he's thinking something, they already know. So it, like, plays the game throughout the course of the book. Oh, man. He goes, no, take me instead. Let, let me go to hell instead. So he finally says, exactly, Terry. He mm-hmm. finally says, would you please take me instead? Can we do this? Would you please take me and spare my children? And then the entire cave lights up. And he's like, you know, what happened? And she said, you, ju- you made your final judgment. Mm-hmm. And she's like, he's like, I didn't judge. And she's like, yes, you did. She's like, isn't this what? Jesus did Mm -hmm. right for us for our sins for us for our our sins sins. we're all his children no matter what sin you may have done he said don't take my children take me instead I almost dropped the book (laughs) (laughs) I was like thank you Jesus because we would all do the same because we would all do the same exactly we would all do the same for our children so think about how God, lo- how much God loves us. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he has totally new perspective. And while he's in the cave, he actually, God, the Godhead, i.e. Papa, gives him an ability to have an experience with Missy while he's in the cave, which was totally, oh gosh, if that didn't make you shed a tear. Oh man, huge. And so, and while he was there as well, well, actually they go back and then they have, you know, a big night celebration. And Mm -hmm. after the celebration, he sees this one um, being, because the the Holy Spirit, Sarayu, was like, I'm going to touch your eyes. And when I touch your eyes, you're going to be able to see the way that we see. And so after she touched her eyes, everything became like beings and kind of spirits. And so then there was like this big celebration outside. You know, everybody was like a being and they were like their auras and they were different colors and it was beautiful. And he said they had this one, this one little aura and it was shooting sideways and it wasn't just like beaming like everybody else. And he was like, what is up with that? And so after a while, they said, that's your father. And he was like, oh, God. <laughs> So then he ran to his father. They embraced. And, you know, they had their moment of forgiveness. But you got to read the book to find out what happened. And they had their moment of forgiveness. And then, you know, they went in. And then, you know, he had another uh, special experience with Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God. I'm not going to give it all to you. But, you know, y'all got to read the book. It's the shack. So open your mind to living differently in the world. And then, last but not least, they, he, they were like, wake um Get some rest because we have a big night ahead. They have a big night ahead. And so the next morning when they woke up, they were like, we have a long, we have a long trek to take. And so the Holy Spirit, um, the Holy Spirit packed them this big, you know, thing of herbs and flowers and stuff to take. So he put it on his back. They had a pick and a shovel and all this. And Papa's like, let's go. But when he looked at Papa that day, i.e. God, God was in a new form. Yeah, he transformed. He transformed. So then God looked like mm-hmm. an older white guy. White mm-hmm. guy. 
Yeah. With a goatee. With a goatee that reminded him more like a father. Right. Mm-hmm. And he was like, so why are you coming at, you know, why did you, he's like, well, today you're going to need a father. And so that's why I'm showing myself as you mm-hmm. as one mm-hmm. today. I was like, drop the mic. <laughs> So long story short, they go on this long hike and he's showing them these red arches as they go. And he's like, what is up with this? Mm -hmm. When they get to the final arch, he's like here and they start digging. That was the day where he showed him that where Missy's body was. So long story short, to bring the book kind of back and then we'll have our discussion is when (sighs) I'm like, oh, is when um, he tells his wife, well, actually. Mm, no, back. he doesn't. Yeah, no. you like go back. Go back. Right. Yeah. So he's he's leaving the shack and he's on his way home and he gets hit by a drunk driver. Y'all don't y'all don't be driving drunk. Yeah. Ends he up gets, in the hospital. Ends in up coma. in the hospital in a coma for like right. four days. Right. And so he's like, Did this really happen? Did it not happen? You know, everybody's gonna think I'm crazy. I can't even remember. Is I'm people are gonna just think it's the medicine that I've been on or whatever. Mm-hmm. So long story short, he tells his wife and she's like, eventually she's like, I believe you. And then he's like, well, how do I tell the police or whatever? But he had become friends with one of the police officers. Right, Tommy. And they, yeah, Tommy. And they, they went up there to see where it was. And when they, were, when they saw where the cave was, they were like, we all believe your story. But we have to figure out what we're going to tell everybody else. Because they are not going to believe that you had an experience with God. And he told you where your daughter was buried. So long story short, everybody found, you know, they went back and they got the forensics and everything. And they came and they found her body and they were able to bury her and give her the proper burial. The proper burial. And Jesus did it because he needed closure. Yes, because he, he needed closure. And, and the key factor is that, um, you know, by him going back, by being, him having this experience. And I started thinking, like, okay, maybe when he got hit by the car and was in a coma, you know, he was going to die. But Jesus decided not to take him. But... Put him, you know, make him go into this other place, out of out of mind or out of body experience, so that he could, you know, forgive, uh, redeem, have fit stronger faith, and 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 save the souls of others, and that's to me, that to me was the message that I received from his, what I call quote and ex- I mean uh, not quote um his uh his coma mm-hmm. slash experience that he had with Jesus mm. to me it was so that all of those things could happen in his life and it did four years later to receive closure from his father's death you know to let and Jesus let him know that his father was okay you know mm-hmm. his father embraced him and he was at peace and he was at peace with that sometimes self forgiveness is the hardest so oh so that all of that, guys? sometimes self-forgiveness is the hardest. You can receive, you know, um, um, you can be absolved of your sins, but yet if you don't forgive yourself, or well, you're truly resolved, absolved. So it, that brought closure to him for that. It solved, you know, uh, Missy's, M- Missy's missing body and gave closure to him and his family. And there was one final cl- bit of closure. Before he left the shack, um, they told him what was wrong with Kate and the, what was wrong with Kate is that she had been s- suffering because she thought that she was to blame for her sister's death and she hadn't told she anyone in four mm-hmm. years and it was literally eating away at her because she hadn't you know opened herself up to people how many of us are literally being eaten away because we don't open up ourselves to others right. and so they gave him that gift and in the hospital when he woke up he told Kate Kate it's not your it's fault not your fault. and you yes. can see her great sadness sure. well, his lifted as well as his throughout this story as well sure and and all the things that he was complaining about that God said well maybe Kate should go to hell it, it altered that altered her life it changed her to be the person that she became but through the, the you know him saying okay I forgive you, and it's okay, and it's not your fault. To Kate, that then changed the course of her life. Absolutely. Now, all of these, look at all of the changes of people's lives that took place from this experience that he had, and him sharing all the things that he went through. And Willie, you know, Willie, his best friend, I think all along sort of 
mm-hmm. knew more than most people about what he was going through. Right. Right, because he shared everything with mm-hmm. Willie. But, you know, look at the, the outcome for Willie, knowing that his friend had this life-altering experience with everything that had taken place. And now his faith grows strong as well. Absolutely. That was the message from God. He could have easily taken Mac's life. Absolutely. He did not. He Absolutely. chose to give Mac closure. Absolutely. And we're going to talk about all, not all, because you can't talk about all, we're going to talk about a couple deep pieces in the book when we get back. We'll be right back. We're talking about the shack, y'all. It's a good life. Carter Business Development delivers. For businesses to compete, they must have access. Let CBD be your bridge. For business development services, radio advertising, social media marketing, brand ambassador, outreach, and access. Contact Carter Business Development at 504-400-7127 or email Eileen at TGLRadioShow.com. Carter Business Development creates unfolding opportunities. CBD connects the dots from where you are to where you want to be. Join the good life now with Carter Business Development, 504-400-7127, 504-400-7127. As quoted, a man who stops advertising to save money is like a man who stops a clock to save time. Let CBD save you time and give you access. Call 504-400-7127, 504-400-7127. Take the steps required for access so you can live the good life too with Carter Business Development. That's 504-400. 7127. Gentilly Italian Pies, home to the $5 Family Happy Hour. Specials on pizza, wings, and drinks, Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Gentilly Italian Pie does fresh for the entire family. Salads, pizza, pasta, wings, and oven-baked sandwiches. Gentilly Italian Pie offers lunch and dinner in a new, modern atmosphere surrounded by big screen TVs. Dine in or carry out by calling 504-826-9180. That's 504-826-9180. Relax. Have a drink from the fully stocked bar or beer on tap while your order is made from the freshest ingredients. Gentilly Italian Pie, 4706 Paris Avenue. It's home where everybody knows your name. So bring the family to Paris and Maribou for the $5 Family Happy Hour, Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's Gentilly Italian Pie. Dine in or carry out. 504-826-9180. That's 504-826-9180. You gotta try the pie. That's the original Italian pie. Located at Paris Paris and Mirabu in Gentilly. Are you satisfied with your current financial position? My name is Kenneth Barnes, President and CEO of KB Enterprises, where we specialize in putting together step-by-step financial action steps for your plan for today and for tomorrow. Whether you're 50 to 85 and need assistance with your final expenses, we have coverage options for every situation. Let us put life back into your finances. Call us today at 504-914-1202. That's 504-914-1202. Are you looking for a better way to get fit? Bored with the same old routines? Looking for results or a way to instill discipline in the kids? Tiger Rock Martial Arts is the answer with Taekwondo, kickboxing, and self-defense classes. Tiger Rock diversifies your training in ways that allows individuals of all ages and fitness levels to feel like a champion. Join Tiger Rock today. TigerRockNola.com or 504-455-9694. That's 504-455-9694. With a three-class starter pack, starting for only $38, which includes your training uniform. Learn, grow, and succeed with Tiger Rock's three convenient locations, Old Metairie, West Bank, and Clearview. There's no better time to start gaining strength, skills, and protection for life than now. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. See you on the mat. When I got hit in a car accident, the insurance company tried to give me less than I knew I deserved. I called Maurice Reed Jr. He got me $150,000. I'm Morris Reed Jr. If you got hit in a car accident, call me. 488-HELP. You're listening to the WBOK New Orleans. Good morning. 
evening and welcome back to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Gumbo Talk Thursday and we're here to open your mind. We are here on The Good Life. I am here with Terry to my right and Ursula Roshan from Relationship Tuesday to my left. And we are discussing The Shack. We kind of gave you a rundown of the book, kind of play-by-play. I didn't want to give it all to you, but I gave you, like, some highlights. And now we're going to kind of take this last segment to really kind of get into, you know, a couple of the the big chunks of, chunks of it. But the funny thing is, there are so many big chunks, y'all. I earmark, <laughs> dog ear, whatever you want to call it, so many pages in this book. I just don't know where to start. But I know Ursula had a question for us. Didn't you have a question for us? I did have a question. I think my question, I mean, because the book, if you read the book, and please read the book, every page speaks metaphorically to so many different aspects of life. Grief, tragedy, the loss of faith, trying to regain faith. And I just said, you know, at some point in everybody's lives, you go through something and you question, you're, you're either angry with God or you question God. You ask him, why did this happen? Why did you allow this to happen to me? And, you know, realistically, as his children, you almost feel like, you know, once that faith is reinstilled, you feel like, how arrogant of me to question him on his plan. Right. So I think for all the people out there right now, questioning God, asking God, You know, God, why did this happen? Why am I going through this? Why do I have this, you know, this heavy grief or this sadness or this depression or this pain? Why am I going through? What do we tell them? Uh, You know, as, as, as we were sharing earlier, and I said sometimes when you question God as to why you're going through this grief, you know, there is possibly some salvation in what you're going through. There's an answer there. You know, you can sometimes it's harder to forgive yourself, you know, when you when right. you when you when you're going through something that may have triggered the grief that you're experiencing. But you know, at the end of the day, you feel like you've got to blame somebody for whatever, you know, happened that's causing you grief. The first point person usually when there's death involved or tr- something you know, devastating, you blame God. But then what you should do is take a closer look after you blame God and see if he's really to blame. Okay? Didn't he he give us all free will? Definitely gave us all free will. And here's a little bit about freedom. I'm going to read a a little piece from the book. They said it was a a bird that had flew in when he, this was when he was first meeting God, when Mac was first meeting God. A little bird flew in. And so God goes, or she began, Papa. Consider our little friend here. Most birds were created to fly. Being grounded for them is a limitation within their ability to fly, not the other way around. So she paused to let Mac think about her statement. You, on the other hand, were created to be loved. So for you to live as if you were unloved is a limitation, not the other way around. So Mac nodded as, you know, and not so much a full agreement. And she goes on, living unloved is like clipping a bird's wings and removing its ability to fly. Mm -hmm. And that's not something I want for you. And she says, here's the rub. I didn't feel particularly loved at that moment. Wow. Wow. So, Mac, pain has a way of clipping Mm -hmm. our wings and and keeping us from being being able to fly. So, think about that. Makes sense. It definitely makes sense. So right. we're holding ourselves back. Of course we are. So we have to do what? Release the pain. And how do you release the pain? What about you know faith? Wait. Yes, you I was going to ask faith. And the you thing, and, and actually, you, Ursula, you asked faith. this during the break, and he was like, "Well, how do I do this with God?" In the book, it also says they were like, "God, what God meets you where you are." He's like, "No matter what path you're on, no matter what religion you are, he's like, I'm going to meet you. You don't have to walk down that path. I'm going to walk down the path to you. I'm going to meet you wherever you are. And right. whatever ounce of faith you have, whatever ounce of anything you have, if, even if look as small as a mustard, a mustard seed." seed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Give me Which that. Very, it's not a lot. Give me right. that and let's start there. Let's start our relationship. And a relationship grows, a trust grows through growing a relationship. So give me something to work with. Just give me the smallest bit and we can start there. And we can grow it. But they were like, it's not going to be an event in time where, oh, 
this is just going to change and everything in the yeah. world is going to be perfect. Right. No, you're growing a relationship. And as they said, when they were walking, you know, when he decided, you know, they walked across together and he didn't fall. Right. But, you know, when, when they started walking back, you know, Mac was starting to feel himself, himself and he started walking <laughs> across water like he could do it. And he's like, wait, it's no. not working the same. No. Uh-uh. And Jesus said, it works much better when I do it with right. you. Exactly. And that's, you know, a metaphor to life. It works so much better when we do it with him and we don't try to do it by ourselves. And another part of the book, I'm trying to flip y'all. I have so many pages flip back was he talks about, you know, one of our sins is that we try to be an individual. Everybody wants to be an individual and everybody wants to be on their own. He said, I, cr- I created you as a community. Mm-hmm. That's one of the ills that you face that you think you can do it alone. And that's why you have all of these institutions. And that's why you have all these rules and regulations to control one another. He said, love is not, not control he said you created that i didn't create that all these institutions right. that exist everywhere i didn't create that you created that oh, you created that because you felt like you needed control and power over exactly. somebody all i gave you was the ten commandments all i gave you yes Amen. and then actually when they go back mm-hmm. in a little bit further they talk about the ten commandments sure and he's did. like see actually that was at the beginning He's like, there was a turnaround after jesus gave his life for you he he's did. like i forgave everything that. after that he said everything that. amazing Open your mind. It's, it was a totally different perspective. If you're having, you know, if there's anything that you're going through in your life or, you know, something that, you know, this is one of those books and it really opens your mind and maybe gives you a little bit of perspective. It's called The Shack. It is by uh, William Paul Young and is truly, truly uh, life changing. And just like you said, Ursula, there were so many people who you said read it and were like, oh, my gosh, that's such a great book. Well, you know, that's what we try to deliver here. It's a, a great life. book. It's, it's a, a great, book. great book. You know, it's just, it's, there is a story. It's twofold, quite frankly, because there is a story about about, you know, Mac losing Missy, okay, Mm -hmm. the death of his daughter and the pain that he went through and, you know, how it changed their lives. But the message, the deeper message in this is your experience and how you feel, you know, with your relationship with God. Right. Okay. Right. It it, it, it gives you some perspective as to how a stronger faith and relationship with him could change lives. Right. Change everything. Everything. It changed everything. So that's the message that's in there. And it makes you think, oh, it's a book that makes you think about your own faith, about your own oneness with God. I tell you what, it changes your lives. <laughs> Read, really the, book. Girl, Read the book. Read the book. Read the book. And I know, look, this might turn some heads too, but I, I thought this was very interesting when they talked about, when they were talking about institutions and how, you know, we created institutions. So Max said, what about marriage? Isn't marriage an institution? Uh-oh. <laughs> he says, it's a relationship. Mm-hmm. Jesus, I'm going to read it directly from the book. Marriage is not an institution. It's a relationship. Jesus paused, his voice steady and patient. Like I said, I don't create institutions. That's an occupation for those who want to play God. Mm-hmm. So, no, I'm not too big on religion and not very fond of politics or economics either. Jesus' visage darkened noticeably. And w- and why should I be? They are the man-made trinity of terrors that ravages the earth and deceives those I care about. Hmm. What mental turmoil and anxiety does any human face that is not related to one of those three? Hello. Hello. Religion, politics, and economics. How many of y'all are depressed or have some issue surrounding those three? Surrounding religion. (laughs) I think everybody does. Politics or your money. Right. Everybody. I'm just saying. Wow. (laughs) And Mac hesitated. He said he wasn't sure what to say. And he said, noticing that Mac's eyes were glazing over, Jesus shifted. He said, put simply, these terrors are tools that many use to prop up their illusions of security and control. People are afraid of uncertainty, afraid of the future. These institutions, these structures and ideologies are all a vain effort to create some sense of certainty and security where there isn't any. It's all false. Systems cannot provide you security. Only I can. Girl, about drop the book. (laughs) I said, y'all can play with God if you want to. (laughs) So God helped him write that book. I'm mm-hmm. not kidding. I was like, I felt chills as I read God this book. God helped him write that book. I felt chills as I read this book. You know, what God is really, the message that, that, that he's saying is, look, you know, come to me. I'm your secure. Come, come to me. Now. And I'll be all. That's it. Oh, when, you're, when you're in pain. Come to you're me. When you're suffering, when you hurt, come to me. But also, come on now, what did you guys get about judgment in this book? 
When he yeah. asked when he asked Mac to be the judge, man, it makes you think that you were put in that hot seat. But let me make you laugh. And you had to judge. Because do you remember what happened before <laughs> he realized that he was going to be the judge? Uh-huh. He thought it was his judgment day. Right. So he started thinking about all, all the, the stuff, stuff that yes. he had done wrong. Ooh, and he was like, That oh, guilt was heavy. Gosh. <laughs> he was like, but This is not going to be fun. He's like, I thought I wasn't dead. I thought I wasn't here to be judged. <laughs> like, not today, maybe tomorrow. But think about us. If you had to be judged today, ooh, girl, look, I'm going to get on my knees when I get off Let this show. Let me tell show. you something. I pray when I wake up. up. <laughs> and then they I, ask I, I you to be the judge. I pray throughout the day. Right, right, right. <laughs> I pray you, before I go to bed. Then you, you ask to be the judge. And then who, who, who are the people that's with you right now? Oh, oh, I've got the Trinity with me. And they're asking me to judge? Oh, man. I can't. I don't know. But he, it was meant for him to understand his life and how he judged so often. All the time. Exactly. And here's another part that I love so much because he was, you know, throughout the story, he was, you know, struggling with his relationship with God, the Godhead. He had a great relationship with Sarayu, the Holy Spirit, and a great relationship with Jesus. But he had a hard relationship with the Godhead. And so this is a part. And he said, you know. Um, you know, or judging you when I'm kind of making it short. He's like, you know, Mac, people judge me. And he said, it was quite a mess, worse often than I thought. And I've totally missed, miss, misunderstood who you are in my life. He said, not totally, Mac. We've had some wonderful moments, too. So let's not make more of it than it is. He said, but I always liked Jesus better than you. He seemed so gracious and you seem so... And then God said, mean. Right. (laughs) And he said, sad, isn't it? He came to show people who I am. And most folks believe the qualities he portrayed were unique to him. They still play us off like good cop, bad cop most of the time, especially the religious folk. He said, when they want people to do what they think is right, they need a stern God. But when they need forgiveness, they run to Jesus. They sure do. I was like, drop the book. (laughs) Again, (laughs) Yeah, I'm y'all about. better read the book. Like read the book. It's called The Shack. I know it sounds like, you know, just, oh, The Shack. Y'all no. read the book. Read the book. We all have a shack. And, you know, we're coming to a close and we didn't give everything away. So we really do hope that you read the book and you enjoyed the book. And it'll just give you a different, you know, um, spiritual per- perspective. And even if it's not, even if you've gone through something heavy in your life or even just open your mind to living differently, you know, maybe you won't judge people that, like you used to. Right. Maybe, you know, you'll be open to other you know, points of view, whatever it may be. Or maybe you know someone who may need the book. Share the book. Open your mind. Because I know this is the second book I bought. I had to share the first one. So, you know, just it's open your mind. It's one of those mind. shareable books. It actually It's it a read and pass is. along. Because it relates to, to life. It, for yeah. everybody. For everybody. But here's the deal. When you read this, then you start thinking about some of those things in your life. You do. That you, you need. You, oh, you can't help it. it. You can't help it. But. Right. And guess what? After you do it, you feel so much better. Yes. You feel so much better. After so you go, after you go to church, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the shack. That is the book. That was our book club, and um, we'll be putting um, different quotes of it up throughout the course of the day. So you can follow us on the Good Life Radio Show on Facebook or Twitter, and we will make sure that we put in Instagram at TGL Radio Show. And we will be putting up different quotes of the book throughout there. But I wanted to give you our next book. Dun, 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 dun. I'm really excited about this book, and I know we have like a couple of seconds to tell you, but this book, um, our next date will be on June 9th, and this book is Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion by Robert B. Cialdini, Ph.D., and um, Ursula actually has, re- has read it before. I didn't know that, but give them a short little piece about the book. Um, personally, I, I like the book because it teaches you how to relate to personalities. Um, me personally, I, I read it when I was a GM of Louis Vuitton, so it helped me, you know, re- like teach my team or, or manage my team and manage their personalities, not like manage everybody individually. It teaches you how to talk to people. Right. The first oh, book was a little bit heavier, excellent. so we wanted to make this a little bit light. You know, for those who are in business, marketing, or you know, running a business, this book can help you. I know Lee, you're trying to tell me to get off, but I had to tell you. Teachers Influence too. is a classic book on persuasion. Explains the psychology of why people say yes and how to apply these understandings. Make sure you get the book. It's a joy to read. I want to talk about it and stop saying yes when you really mean no. <laughs> that is a good life and make sure you, you join our book club. We'd love for you to follow. We're out. <laughs>